Hello everyone, Vincent Thieu and David McKenzie here and we are at the end of our HDTVDES video coverage of the CES 2018 Consumer Electronics Trade Show and what we would like to do in this video is to try and let you know our highlights of the show. So I'll start off from my end if you don't mind David. I started off the trip by visiting Hollywood with Panasonic. Yes I know, yes I know that I have to agree There is no one as reckless as me And now there are no reasons why There's no beauty must die Me to harbor me also I was very very impressed by the close collaboration between that Japanese brand and several notable, very very significant post-production studios such as Technicolor, Company 3 and also Encore and also Deluxe and I think there was a statistic that was shown that tells us these post-production companies make up 70% of the market share in Hollywood and the message Panasonic is trying to drive across is that their Panasonic EZ1000 OLED television has been used as a client reference monitor in many of their grading suites because as you may be aware the gold standard is always the BVM X300 at this moment in time but that is a 30 inch screen size and sometimes it can be hard to look out for artifacts or any noise in the image and so they need a larger screen size to actually see their work and they have been using the Panasonic EZ1002 or EZ1000 in the States over the past year or so and from what we've been told, they have been very happy with the performance of the Panasonic OLED that they can actually get the sort of reference level kind of a video fidelity and color accuracy out of a consumer display. And for the show, Panasonic has launched two new lines of OLED television, the FZ950 and the FZ800, and they looked insanely good, insanely accurate out of the box. And I'm someone who actually likes an accurate image, as you probably may know by now. I, what's, <laughs> what's not to like about an accurate image? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, uh, look what we have behind us in the hotel room. What's this? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it just has that filmic, really organic look that I really like so much. And one thing that Panasonic has been stressing on their new OLED television is this dynamic LUT capability and what it is is that depending on the analysis of the incoming histogram the Panasonic OLEDs, the new one, will be able to extract the appropriate 3D LUT so that they make the appropriate adjustments for either the darker end of the picture or the brighter end of the picture. So at the end I think the message is that Panasonic LUTs are better than other manufacturers LUTs. And David, what are your highlights of the show? I think just generally going in what you're saying, it's it's what does it say about the improvements to this industry in you know, that we have high-end consumer displays, not low-end ones, high-end consumer displays being used in post-production, not necessarily as a reference monitor, but at least in there as a client, you know, a client monitor. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that 10 years ago when we had to exactly. fight to get an accurate picture out of these things? Yeah. Um, LG specifically, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we did a whole video on it. I'm really delighted about dark frame insertion being in there. Uh, it makes sense, obviously. You know, Sony implemented it. In Europe, Panasonic implemented it. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised it's showing up in the LG as well this year. But, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. I mean, I think the biggest improvements to the LG OLEDs were a couple of years ago. So, you know, it's more uh, evolutionary rather than revolutionary this year. But, um, no, there's, there's a lot to look forward to, I think. Yes. And talking about improvements, again, I probably agree with David that it is evolutionary rather than revolutionary because the underlying OLED panel is still going to output a similar level of peak brightness and DCI-P3 color gamut coverage. But another improvement that we have actually covered in a separate video is the Kalman 3D LUT mm. AutoCal functionality. And this just allows us automatic adjustments of more than 30,000 points of color correction, whereas in the past we are probably limited to, let's say, 2-point white balance, 
10 point white balance, 20 point white balance, and a three axis color management system for the six colors mm -hmm. on the red, green, and blue, and cyan, magenta, and yellow colors on top. So, the sort of 3D LUT direct access will just blow any other color correction out of the way. And I really look forward to seeing how it will actually pan out when we receive an actual review sample. And let's move on to Samsung then, because Samsung last year hasn't been exactly a vintage year for Samsung. But they showed us a couple of things in a private demo. And what are your thoughts on that, David? Um, obviously, it's, you know, Samsung's pushing LCD. I think we have to accept the fact that <laughs> Samsung OLED is never going to happen again. It's, that's pretty clear now. Mm -hmm. um, and they're making the most of LCD. They're, they're you know, they're absolutely uh, talking about the the superior light output that LCD and especially for LCD can do, and especially how that benefits HDR. Um, of course, I mean, it, it, it. We need to look at you know Hollywood content or release content to see what kind of difference there is in in in, in what studios are releasing compared to you know demo the demo material Samsung are using. But yeah, I mean, there there are examples of Hollywood content as well where, mm -hmm. on the OLED displays, as much as I love them. You can see that the they're, they're missing uh, peak highlight details that the LCD can show you mm -hmm. in HDR that the OLED mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this year also Samsung reintroducing full array product, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think that's if you want to even be even stand a chance of being comparable to you know OLED contrast in the whole, you're going to have to do that. Um, improvements also they've made to the um, LCD, the, the panel structure, to improve black level as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also, believe it or not, improvements to off-axis viewing. So yes, yes. It, that's nice to see, put it that way. I think yes. it's it's for a long time, LCD seemed a little stagnant, you know, mm -hmm. just just not, mm -hmm. not, not, not improving from a picture quality perspective too much. And I hopefully, hopefully this year we're going to see that. So. Okay. Yes, certainly in the private demo that both David and myself attended, the new 2018 flagship QLED looked very, very good. And they don't actually have a name for it yet, at least as far as I'm aware. But let's call it the 2018 Q9. And I think they were playing a clip from La La Land and there was the shot of Ryan Gosling in the dark, only illuminated by... Uh, spotlight. Yeah, spotlight and there was virtually no blooming whatsoever when you stand straight on and they were brave enough to compare against an OLED and also their last year's model which is the Q9F and also a Sony Z9D or ZD9 and it looked extremely good I have to say the black level were really inky and notably off axis it retained not only the color saturation, but also the blacks don't really float as much as well, a, it, it, it is still an LCD. It course. is still an you LCD. Know, yes, yes. I'm the same yes. As yes. And also, Samsung has this history of demoing one product at CES, and the consumers get a different version, like you know <laughs> what happened last year with the Q9F. So, all I can say is it looked extremely good. It looked picture competitive versus the OLED. And each of these technology has its own strengths and weaknesses. And certainly, Samsung is recognizing its weaknesses in terms of the black level expression side of things and also the viewing angles. And they have worked really, really hard all year to address this. So maybe watch the space and see what the new QLED is going to offer for the year. And looking forward towards the future, Samsung has a couple of things up their sleeves as well. Are you familiar with any of them? I think the 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 most interesting part of the show for me has been HDR10+. Plus. Oh, right. Um, okay. I mean, obviously, I, I don't like to call the situation we have with HDR a format war. I mm -hmm. think that's needlessly sensationalist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I obviously, in on the one hand, we have HDR10 with um, static metadata, and we've had Dolby Vision with a 12-bit signal instead of mm -hmm. a 10-bit signal, mm -hmm. and dynamic metadata, and that's that's I think that's been the ace up their sleeve so far. Mm -hmm. and lo and behold, you know, companies have gotten together: Samsung, Panasonic, Warner's are in there now. Mm -hmm. With uh, they're they're basically they're they're adding that missing dynamic metadata mm -hmm. to um, HDR10. I, I, it's a it's a royalty-free system, or it's it's certainly going to be a lot cheaper to implement than yeah. Dolby Vision. Yeah. So. Um, that could be very interesting that, um, you know, watch this space and see how that pans out. Certainly. I'm not going to try and put you on the spot and force you to choose between <laughs> Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus, but certainly HDR10+, Plus has been making waves mm. since IFA last year. 
and it will be interesting to see how Dolby responds. Mm. And let's move on to our last manufacturer then, which is Sony. I think uh, although there are many other manufacturers out there like Hisense and TCL that we would like to cover, but we have an insanely busy schedule. And so let's cover Sony and then wrap up this video. With regards to Sony, my takeaway is that the Japanese brand is really display technology agnostic, if I can actually coin such a word, because they are still offering premium LED LCD. So the Sony Z9D or Z9 will continue even throughout 2018. And that is my favorite full array local dimming LED LCD to date. And they are also introducing a second line of OLED television in addition to their top end flagship A1E. So the new OLED television will be known as the AF8 or A8F if you are in the States. The specs are very, very similar and the main difference is design. Whereas the A1E had a tilt back design, the A8F or AF8 will be straight up, so it hopefully will appeal to more consumers out there. And I really love the 10,000 nit HDR, 8K <laughs> HDR prototype. To me, right, the moment I walked into that room, I just said, wow, because the display they set up beside it, the 75-inch Sony Z9 was no slouch, but 10,000 nits, it just gives such sparkle, such realism to almost anything it touches, isn't it? And what are your thoughts on this? It looks great. I mean, you saw the Gran Turismo demo. Yes, the racing. I, I mean, it, look, it, it looks fantastic, but I have to say I'm a little, I think I'm a little jaded because it took, do you remember the, the number of years we were coming to trade shows yes. and we were being teased with OLED and yeah. it took years for that to turn into yeah. a finished product. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be as long maybe as that until yeah. we see a, a, a yeah. maybe not a tent, yeah. a, a, maybe yeah. not that bright, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's going to be that long before we yeah. see that as a finished product, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'll, it was beautiful, yes, but I'll be more excited when it's something we can buy. Of course, <laughs> yes, yeah. But it's just something really exciting to whet our appetites, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a, certainly something more interesting out there. And on that note, I would like to wrap up this video, but I just remembered that I have attended a couple of invite-only demos that you may have not have actually attended. Ooh. So I was invited to the LG Display booth. Now, just to clarify the difference between LG Display and LG Electronics, LG Display is the panel manufacturer, so they manufacture all these WRGB OLED panels to be distributed to the likes of Panasonic, Sony, and LG Electronics themselves. But LG Electronics, is actually the actual television seller. So when you are buying, let's say, a C8 or B8 off the shelves, you are going to be buying it from LG Electronics. And I think there's a lot of confusion, even among journalists, with regards to the difference between these companies. So they think that they are under an umbrella company, which is certainly true. But LG D or LG Display is the panel manufacturer. And I've seen a 65-inch rollable OLED where the screen can be rolled up and down. And I'm going to coin the term rollout. I don't care what you say. <laughs> and they have also shown an 88-inch 8K OLED, which looks really fantastic. What are your thoughts on, say, 8K resolution, David? I think we're going to reach a point where there's obviously there's diminishing returns. I, I felt 1080p resolution was no sludge. <laughs> it's pretty high. But, you know, there's a lot of, especially with some of the better mastered Ultra HD Blu-rays, you can see there's a nice a nice uptick in detail. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't think it's a thing for content. I know NHK in Japan are going to be broadcasting 8K, mm -hmm. but let's not all start saying, oh, no, the sky is falling. 8K is coming. Throw away your, your, your 4K Blu-rays. Throw it all out. Um, no, I mean, it's uh, th that resolution is going to be around for a long time. And 8K is really, really going to be a display resolution. Mm -hmm. the, the, you're going to be you're going to be watching 4K or well, 2160p and 1080p content on those displays. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of having a higher resolution display, of course, is the bigger the screen gets, the more visible the pixels could get. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even, at, you know, at 4K resolution, you'd have to have a pretty gigantic dis uh, mm -hmm. display to to be able to start seeing individual pixels. So. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, not uh, not a hundred percent necessary, but pretty nice. Yeah. Which brings me to the point of the Samsung 146 inch micro LED, yes. which is modular, called the Wall, and it's interesting that you mentioned about pixel size because part of the reason why Samsung actually 
placed a barrier to prevent people from getting too close to the screen is because it is a 146 inch screen but it only has a 4k resolution and from what it's i've only. been told the <laughs> pixel size or pixel pitch is actually fairly large and if you actually walk up close you will be able to discern the individual pixel mm. which is why samsung was not enthusiastic about letting people walk up close unlike other 8k resolution screens but micro led inorganic, you know, capable of high peak brightness, certainly is the future. Again, it's not going to be anytime soon that we can get our hands on it. Look, well, looks great, but let us it, know when we can buy yeah, it. Yeah, when we, you can buy it. And another thing is its modularity as well. Mm. You can, you know, custom make it to any screen size that you want to place in your two million pound mansion. <laughs> and, and, you know, and so, yeah, I think that's it for now. Do you have anything to add, David? I think it's it. All like right. I said, I think that's the theme. It's evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Mm -hmm. um, and let us know when we can buy the wall. <laughs> right. okay. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here, David, to Thank help out with our CES video coverage. So if you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you maybe next year at CES again together. Okay? <laughs> Thank you again, David. Thank you. Just checked into my hotel in Las Vegas for CES. Let me show you around. Here we have two twin beds. Nice view of the strip, I think. Mandalay Bay at the far corner. The desk where I will edit some video if I'm not too drunk. Nice shower with a small bath. I don't really do bath alone. Right, that was a bit unprofessional, isn't it? So, let's do it another style.